e everyone knows, even the layman, I think, that one of Orson Welles' innovations, supposedly, was uh, putting the camera in places where no one had before. Not People only said, that, you can't but do that. And he said, well, we'll do it by doing it this way, and he did it. Uh, what did it take to well, think he did of that the great sort of thing, thing was to put, I mean, the great thing he did was to put the top on sets. Ceilings, yeah. No one ever saw ceilings before. No, but he movies. put the camera so low you could, you know, see all the lights up there. He, so he put a ceiling on the set. Mm -hmm. <gasps> God, he did that all the time. And that he really put the camera below the, 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 the floor. Is that because he didn't know any better or he was an innovator? He, d he didn't learn any of the so-called rules and said, you know, why not shoot up that? You do that on the stage. I mean, he, I mean he, so much of his, what's so dramatic about his stuff, it comes from all that sort of stage stuff he did. Now, are you luckier to be directors now than when he was, when there weren't uh, the old timers around saying, you can't do that, you can't have the focus in the background as well as in the foreground, you can't do uh, all those things Wells did. Uh, do you still run into that attitude? Yeah, mm. a little bit. They say, no, 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 you can't do that. There's always a way. And yeah. I, my, my, my answer is, I'm sure you'll find a way. Mm -hmm. And I walk away. And, and they do, and, and they do it then because it's a challenge. No, no, it's not a challenge. It's, it's like uh, I really trust them that they will find a way. Yeah. These guys. Uh, but if guys you I have with. a lot of technical, I have a lot of technical background. I mean, I've shot and I've edited. I've done it all. I mean, I've taken sound. I mean, if they start giving me that mumbo jumbo about, well, well, I can't yeah. put the, mm -hmm. can't put the camera up there. The lights will flare at the 704 and the 2602 <laughs> is not going to go into the 4. Yeah. And you say, and then you know exactly what they're talking about. You know, they, they can't pull that stuff. It's I think that's the problem of theatrical director coming into movies where he doesn't know what they're talking about. They can really feed you a lot because it takes, I remember shooting with an Italian crew once. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Oh, I, was, I was there, I was there. Italian crew. You were there, the steps of the church. I was there, that's right, the steps of the this church. This is a whole different problem. They're building up this, this track on the steps of the church and I'm doing a tracking shot of Cliff Robertson walking up. the obsession? Yes, yeah. walking up the steps of the church and they're pushing the dolly up. And so, first they say, oh, the shot can't be done. The shot cannot be done. And I said, no, you build the dolly up here and you push it up. Can't be done, can't be done. So we finally said, try it. So they built this whole thing. They pushed it up the steps, and it worked. Of course, it took them a long time. They complained a lot. Then I said, now we're going to do it the second shot on the second set of steps. They said, absolutely not, and they went on strike. <laughs> That's right. On strike. Too hard. On strike. Yes. Too hard. It was raining. What too makes, hard. What makes a second imagine? flight higher than yeah, a first flight? Just too hard. Uh -huh. I said, you can't, can't imagine. Too hard? Well, what happened finally? That was it. I had to think of a different shot. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So you don't always win. It no, depends on what country win. you're in and uh, the attitude you I have. I make it easy. A little yeah. bit easy. <laughs> Are there certain no-nos where you just never put the camera? To me now, if I were directing a movie, I would think, now how do I know who's going to tell me where to put the camera? You don't put it in the fireplace, do you? That's one no-no. I had I did show from it from behind the flames? Yeah, in the old days, it always used oh, to be right. behind the flames yes, for some reason. Yes. I well, mentioned that to Santa Hitchcock Claus, when yes. I did a show with him, and he said, yeah. Yes, I always want to know who's in the fireplace. Yes, that's right. Because they don't. Uh, that's right. It's as if someone's watching. Looking. Right. Someone's Point watching. of view of brick. Point under, of under view. Under the table, yes. under a glass table, yes. looking up. Or log. Unhappy mm -hmm. log. Yes. Uh, th th that's. <laughs> what can, is there a rule you can make about that, that that direction should not call attention to itself? Oh, um, well, yeah. I mean, when you start putting stuff in the foreground. Or, in television, they do all the time. We're dollying with stuff in the foreground all the time. Oh, we do make, a lot of that, though. Make the, I know, but. We do a lot. Of, we call attention to ourselves in our direction a lot of it. I mean, camera movements Speak and things. Speak for yourself. I try not to draw attention to myself. Come on, no Brian. the other day. <laughs> Come on. Make a few mistakes. So, yeah. I can see what a, you have a wonderful effect on each other. Really great. Yeah. Uh, Brian, I, I, I saw The Fury, and I had an experience after seeing it that I also had after seeing the movie um, that, that neither of you did make, I think. I, I know neither of you made. Don't look now. Um, and I've had this a few other times in seeing a movie. When, F, when I leave and go out, Corners of buildings, corridors, and things seem to, this sounds weird, move in a strange way, or you feel a little vertiginous when you see certain things, or the, a corner seems menacing. <laughs> vertigo, from, yeah, from the yeah, word vertigo. Right. Now, I know, and I read in a review, that there are conscious ways of using the camera so that you can make that. It's an almost an after image thing that happens. Do you know what I'm talking about at all? Yeah, I, I totally love this guy's mad. style. Do He's I got a hell of a lot of style. <laughs> What's he talking about? I, I think, no. I think it's, <laughs> Aren't I talking about anything? What I think it is, well, I'll, I'll tell you. what I think it is, is that there's a, uh, uh, there's a way of moving the camera with a certain type of lens, usually a wide angle lens. If you get close enough to a wall, you feel like you're creeping along it. You know? Yes. Well, and it's very repulsion, and you can, though. Repulsion to that. that repulsion. And, uh, repulsion, too. Pads of glory. The wall pads of glory in the trench. The trench. The tracking show with Kirk Douglas. There's a lot of that, you know, with an extremely wide angle lens. And Orson Welles did it. Orson Welles does it all the time. Tracking all the time. And if there's enough of it in a movie, it persists a little bit afterwards. Stays, yeah. The way that, have you ever looked into bubbling Persist water in a stream for a long time and then when you look away, the ground ripples? Yes. Yeah. No, I never did. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't. 
I'm sorry, I'm having one of my spells. <laughs> I, I, but I, I know think I'm. You should have done some more reading for the show. Now listen, I know I'm talking about. No, this. Come on, tell me that I'm talking about something that does. I, I just don't look at the bubbling water. I, I'm not a nature person. I don't. Don't well, you take no, Alka Seltzer? No How about that shot of Alka Seltzer? Now, come on. I'd have looked at the lens. Yes. Did you see that shot of Alka Seltzer in Taxi Driver? Yeah. That was right. a reference slow to uh, Godard's movie. Godard. No, what's the slow motion? What's the slow motion? No, it wasn't. Uh, uh, no, he was. I think he was in 40, 42 frames. Forty-two like frames. Very simple. Yes. But like, uh, yeah, that was just a uh, um, great shot. You know, the Alka Seltzer thing. I like that. Yeah, it was fun. Why is it? Why? 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 Why is Hitchcock the master? Why you've been referred to Brian as the new Hitchcock and so on? Well, because Hitchcock, I think, uh, pioneered a whole type of film grammar. He learned. He taught us how to express things as clearly visually, I think, as they can be expressed. It's like good grammar. You either speak well, or you speak badly. You either write clearly, or you don't. And he does it. And when he's expressing an idea, or a, mm -hmm. you know, a whole cinematic sequence, he does. He puts the camera in exactly the right position. He has exactly the right shots. You know, and everybody else is sort of muddle-headed and bird-brained, basically, and in relationship to him. Yeah. Why hasn't everyone learned from him, then? Because he's a genius. You can't duplicate it, you just have Well, you it. can get close, but he is a genius. Yeah. I mean. it's rather... yeah, have you consciously duplicated Hitchcock effects? Sure, and, and sure. I mean, learning how to try to use that grammar, so I've I. very much mm -hmm. tried to look through his eye, and I think now have sort of evolved a kind of grammar of my own, but... Uh, I mean, I mean, if you want to know anything about cinematic storytelling, I mean, he's it. Then how can they possibly remake a Hitchcock movie? There were plans it's to crazy. remake one, and since, since every shot of a Hitchcock movie is known to well, students Well, what's interesting about film. cinema is that you uh. can copy so carefully. I mean, you can put the camera in exactly the same position. It's mm -hmm. Xerox of a picture. You could actually picture. duplicate it, Absolutely. same setup. Except would have no soul. Mm -hmm. Now, what you're talking about does not have to do with knowing how to operate a camera, apparently, because if Hitchcock can be believed, he, he said to me, um, I've never looked through a camera in my life. Yeah, but he used to be an illustrator. I mean, he thinks visually. He makes little drawings. He knows what he's doing. Tell us what that is. You, you draw out uh, what's called a storyboard, storyboard yeah. beforehand, storyboard. And, and it and it shows... But some people, I don't know, you, you, must, you must do this. I mean, I, you, some people think visually. I mean, when you read a script, you start well, yeah, saying I, no, pictures. I, I have trouble reading. I can't read, and I have trouble, I have trouble, <laughs> I'm serious, I have trouble uh, writing. I have uh, Why? a grammar. I just, uh, it's, uh, my grammar's impossible, and, uh, and um, uh, I just uh, uh, learn to really, um, pictures, always pictures. Yes. And um, I have uh, loose concentration reading novels or scripts or books, that sort of thing. And, uh, it's very hard. That's why when I read a script, usually I just read the dialogue. And uh, very often I'm shooting a scene and they'll come over to me and say, do you want the door to open in the beginning like it says in the script? I say, where's that? And I haven't even read the description. Because <laughs> so you only read the dialogue. Basically only the dialogue, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, I just, uh, for some reason, find it very difficult to uh, concentrate. Well, when I read a script, I start to see the shots. Yeah, like, you I begin to see things. You begin to see things, yeah. You know, and if I can read, if I read like a Mar if I read a script that Marty's going to do, or a script that George Lucas is going to do, or Spielberg's going to do, I can see what they're going to shoot because mm -hmm. I can sort of think how they're knowing them and knowing the way they work. You can sort of think in their grammar. Really, you can yes. say he'll have Cassavetes in the background, yes. the desk will be in the yes. foreground, yes. the camera will be about this high. I mean, when I read high. Star Wars, I knew exactly. I had a very good idea what it was going to look like, knowing George and seeing some of the models and some of the drawings. Mm -hmm. I could see very much what it was going to look like. But you still draw uh, pictures. That's how I started uh, getting fascinated. I used to draw draw little. Um, I, I didn't know that what they what they were. They were storyboards at the time. I was about eight years old, nine years old, and doing my own little movies, in a little film form. You know, sort of uh, strip, strips of paper and that sort of thing, in black and white and color in different different ways. And I still uh, make the storyboards uh, as much as possible. New York, New York, I did about it. Only, only half the picture, but uh, Taxi Driver was completely done, and Mean Streets completely. Alice, uh, a ninety percent. You know, without realizing it, and even less waltz, even less waltz. There are certain scenes in less waltz that were done in the MGM studio, yeah. which were completely storyboarded. Uh, another quote of Hitchcock's was that the, the fun of the movie for him was over before the shooting began. Do you yes. believe that? Well, for What's me, so had, uh, much yeah. of much of what I you know, see, I have a storyboard which I lay all around my room, and I look at all the shots in relationship to the whole. So I've sort of really worked it out in the whole scheme of the film. So when I go on the stage and start to shoot or go out on location. I very much shoot what's in the design. I sometimes, you know, usually compress it because you don't have enough time, or you elaborate on it if you have more time. But I've more or less figured it out. And then, and then the big problem, of course, keep the life of the performances. And, uh, you know, that's the problem with acting and the kind of movies that I make. The performances have got to be alive, or the whole thing just dies. And that when Hitchcock was at his worst, it's when those performances are dead. Then the whole superstructure doesn't really hold up at all. Are there places in his movies where he couldn't deal with the actors properly? Well, he missed cast, or they're very badly. I mean, The Birds, I think, is a great movie if it wasn't for Tippi Hedren. I yeah. mean, she, to me, is just not interesting. Yeah.